Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Uh, it's been a little while, and I apologize for that, but I should be getting back into the swing of things here. Work's been crazy. Family's been crazy. Um, but uh, we're going to kick off the season the right way. My last video, I think, was my GNCC race. So this is a clinic that I signed up for with uh, the one and only Shane Cuthbertson, pro rider from out west who was kind enough to come to Ontario and provide a, a quick clinic, uh, but a couple of clinics over a week time frame, hosted by Kawartha Off-Road Motorcycle Association uh, and coordinated by Big Iron Moto. So Sean, thanks very much for putting this together. It was absolutely a blast. If you're wondering when the coaching starts, skip ahead to two minutes and 44 seconds and you'll be able to catch a few glimpses of Shane providing some invaluable advice to the few lucky riders that were able to sign up for this clinic. If I have one takeaway from this, it would be go to a clinic and receive some coaching if you've never done it before. This is value that cannot be recreated by any other means certainly not by riding um, out with your friends and just having a blast all the time and not really working on technique you need somebody that is a a fantastic rider but b also has experience coaching and i think uh you know that second portion is where most of us kind of miss out because i'm sure we all ride with really good riders and, and they're able to give us uh you know a lot of a lot of advice and a lot of recommendations but in all honesty having somebody who not only is an amazing rider but also an experienced coach makes all the difference i've taken away quite a few things from this um, i've actually went out a few times since to try and practice it and get it ingrained so it becomes more muscle memory and i don't have to think about it so much and i have found quite a bit of value and i am extremely happy that i signed up for it so should have a lot more content coming um, you know, watch the video, uh, please subscribe, obviously hit the like and notifications button. Going to try and grow the channel this summer quite a bit. And, uh, thank you for all your support. when we're doing like bigger obstacles, bigger logs, bigger ledges, bigger hills, stuff like that. But there is some good stuff and like I say to these, this group, I, got, I did Sean's group yesterday, and it doesn't really matter what, what, what the hill looks like, you can make it hard no matter what, where you start. So we can always make a, an easy hill make it as hard as we want to. Um, so does that sound okay to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool of my uh, deltoids in front of my shoulders so if they're a little bit lower as I'm trying to get myself coming forwards I can actually feel my lats now engaging and my middle back is also engaging in the back of my deltoids so I'm, I'm using more of my upper body muscles than just one muscle alone the more I have to more effort I have to do to the higher than that leverage is it's just kind of like riding a Harley right the more I have to kind of do this the more I'm using that shoulder the more I'm pulling like this like you would a barbell um, row then that's where you're using that back muscle. That's why I could develop those. So that's why we're trying to get those bars down into a reasonable position. And of course, everybody's height, um, torso, arms are different lengths, so that there's no right combination. So that's kind of a handlebar spiel. As far as like levers, uh, you can see where these are set right now. So I recommend basically level with the ground or tilt it down a little bit. Um, we don't want to have them push all the way down uh, lower. The reasoning I don't want to have them down that far. So you can see that as I as I need to go to use that clutch, I actually have to re-grip. All right. So I'm actually spinning my hand. I'm re-gripping to pull that, and then letting go of it. So it's a, it's a, it's difficult. So every time I I do that, you can see the veins are popping out in my hand. That's fatiguing my hand. That's pumping up my arms. That just means that I'm not going to be ride, able to ride on my capabilities for the like time that I want to. There's going to be a point in time where I'm going to start to get uh, fatigued and my riding is going to go to into the into the dumper. So now you can see my hands on there. It's nice and relaxed. All right. So that's kind of the lever um, lever positioning. The other thing is like how far do we put that lever in? 
we want to try to utilize the leverage of the outside part of the lever because inside that's again harder to do the other tires that i use are are more um like that tire would be more sort of european spec 140 tires with the uh, lower tread pattern the half inch knobs um, big spacing but what that tire allows allows me to do is it allows me to get a really nice big fat footprint so when my body weight's on top of there that thing's going down like that you get that big footprint that big boost of um, uh, traction out of the hole right away so so that's uh that's something that's also worthwhile looking to position is the furthest forward yeah you can tell i was the moving it around because i couldn't figure so out it, it was forward so it's in the furthest hole forward and then these clamps are also offset so I might initiate the turn with my inside peg, but all my weight goes to the outside as soon as I initiate that. Well, if my hand is turned like this, flat on the grip, the only way for me to operate that throttle is to turn my elbow down. As I turn my elbow down, my shoulder drops, I'm all of a sudden headed over this way with my body, but the bike's going that way, so I'm off center again. If I now operate that throttle like I'm turning a doorknob or a screwdriver, I can operate that throttle and I can operate that brake at the same time. All right. So, all right. So this is my position. My chin is here. My chin is over top of the handlebars at all times. It doesn't matter if I'm like, oh man, I need to relax. Chin's still there. Get back into my riding position. Chin's still here. I'm like, holy crap, squirrel. Right. Chin's still, chin's still here. When I go to sit, chin's still here. All right, so this hmm. is where I'm at all the time. When I go to sit, all I'm doing is I'm throwing my knees forwards and you can see where I sit. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to aim my hips to be right over top of those foot pegs, all right? The other major pinpoint on the motorcycle is right where the frame connects to the swing arm, which connects to the motor, which is where they put the foot pegs, center of gravity of the bike, all right? So if we get our weight right over there, this bike handles like a dream. It's on basically like you on a pivot. All right. There's a lot of stuff in that nutshell. So I always tell people like, take what you can out of that. What makes sense to you and think about it today when you're riding. So I talked about the elbows being up. So we want to make sure that we have that. I talked about bending the knees. So we really want to get away from doing that. Yeah. Being on the balls of your feet, the, the sitting and like in entering a turn and turning right so what happens with the motorcycle when we when we turn is we're leading the motorcycle in this way we now need to we need to accommodate so we have the motorcycle leaning in this way with this much weight 250 pounds worth so we need to bring our body out to try to balance that yeah. right so our body has to come out this way um, to balance the bike as we do that we're trying to put as much weight as we can on that outside foot peg to maximize the amount of traction that we're putting down to the tires okay if i put my foot out like this which is a motocross move which was developed a long time ago when bikes did not work the way they do now if i put my foot out like this this is a catch-all as soon as you do this boom everything comes inside you're done the corner you've just minimized you just you've basically ruined the corner uh potentially hurt your ankle and your knee um and you've taken all the weight off that outside all right so a lot of people use this as a crutch like that's a confidence thing to me most of the times when i see this this is a confident i'm not too sure about this turn i don't know what i'm doing in this turn i'm just going to put this out here as a safety mechanism oh boom i screwed it up keep going and they continue to do that over and over and over again people were always like you know grip the tank grip the tank well what happens now when i grip the tank i'm like way up here there's like the tanks were back here back in the day um you know so the geometry and everything's changed now these bikes are meant to be really neutral and, and easy for us to handle so um we have to adapt our our style now to to what the new age technology is so
So go in your in the standing in that position that you were just working on there. Okay. All right. So the only thing I want you to do, so you see your chin is here. So I want it. To oh, okay. Here, Jeez. Okay. But don't bend your knees that way, right? So lock lock in there. For instance, right now, just for for the benefit of it. Okay. And then yeah, so your chin's over there now. So. Oh, okay. Or you can even straighten your legs out, which will push you forward. Yes. That's where you want it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's so different. So the difference is if you go back in the position you were just in. So yeah, back, which was kind of like, it. yeah. So you input, you're going backwards. It doesn't right. matter, right? Okay. So now straighten your legs out and get more over top. You you input, you're not going anywhere. Mm. You're always over top of okay. the control here. Okay. So that little mm. that little bit of change is, 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 is a massive change. Right yeah, now. you can feel it. Yeah. I thought I was over because I was looking down at it, but yeah. I see what you're saying yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how'd that feel on the way back? Better. Feel like you're kind of more over the bike? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we'll just work. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Perfect. Just take a couple quick little tips and then one he paid for, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> that was so if we're sitting, what that actually means is bike's going this way. That's too crazy. Oh my god. We <laughs> broke it. I did this to that bike yesterday. So if I'm in the seated position, again, I want to be up over top of those foot pegs with my hips. As that bike goes in, I want to come outwards, which means I'm actually moving my butt over on the seat, all right? The only time you would stay in this position in a corner is if you had like a motocross mm. rut and you were able to kind of use that G-force to, to hold, hold the bike and yourself up, all right? Generally, off-road, we don't have that. Um, so what we want to do is physically move our butt over so we're kind of sitting on the side of the seat. Uh, my elbow's up in the corner and I'm putting as much weight as I can on my outside foot peg. Now when I'm in a standing position, all right, so now I'm in a standing position as I lean this motorcycle in, I have to lean my, my, my weight out this way, all right? So I'm trying to get that center of my body on the contact patch where, where, the, where the tire's contacting the ground. So. You guys will see as I do that, my outside knee actually comes out, all right? Because if I'm gripped on the motorcycle like this, my hips only move so far. Mm. So it limits my range, okay? But if I'm able to put my outside knee out, I can turn this bike down as much as I want and accommodate with my body this way, okay? So I'll do a quick demonstration of what that looks like. Keeping the, it's keeping the arm up. You don't you don't you don't realize how much your arms are tucked in until somebody tells you to like put them up. The outside elbow. Man. Hang on like you're turning a screwdriver. Yeah, it's like it's actually taking like thought to keep. If your grips wear, if your grips wear in here. Yeah. You got the wrong grip. Right. If your grips wear out here, you got the right grip. Yeah, I really like that screwdriver hammer uh, or that doorknob thing. I really like that little yeah. analogy. Yeah, I always use my my lever as like almost like a plane for where I'm turning. Like I almost, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like right. I feel it. I always have it. But and if you're kind of like Shane saying resetting, it's but I'm always yeah. Like a screwdriver. Same with I always thought my chin was far enough forward, but it wasn't. No. Nope. <laughs>